Hi, I'm Charlie Band, and welcome to the seventh edition of Full Moon's Video Zone. You know, when we started the Video Zone, I thought it was a great idea, really because of all the uh, interest the fans had and behind the scene footage and how the picture was made and interviews with directors. And you know, I hoped it would be well received, but we've gotten thousands of letters uh, from the fans and also from a lot of the video retailers saying that the idea of having a behind the scenes magazine at the end of every one of our feature films is really well liked by the customers. So we're making it part of the deal now. After every movie you're going to see the making of and hopefully one day I'll be talking to you from video zone number 100 or something. In any case, the Netherworld really represents something new for us in as much as the soundtrack of the movie was done by David Bryan uh, from Bon Jovi. And uh, as you know, there's some original songs and a performance by Edgar Winters. From this point forward, Full Moon Pictures will also have a lot of uh, emphasis on the music and the film. So we're going to be getting other rock stars and performers with some track record to do the music for our movies. And of course, the soundtrack albums will be available as well. As far as the overall picture, we're shooting as many movies as we can possibly shoot, uh, practically one a month. Uh, next picture up, or rather the next picture coming out, is a film called Demonic Toys, which has some really great special effects by Dave Allen, who did Puppet Master, and John Beekler, who I've worked with for many years now in the past. And um, after that, we'll have a picture out called Seed People. And after Seed People, we'll have a film called Arcade, which we've been working on now for almost a year with a lot of computer effects. We've got a sequel to Subspecies we're doing. We're doing a sequel to Doll Man, which went real well. Of course, I think we'll be making Puppet Masters forever. Anyway, thank you again for all of your support. Um, you hear people say this all the time, thank the fans, thank you for the support. But it's really true, because if the fans weren't renting the tapes and the retailers weren't stocking them, uh, we wouldn't really have uh, the successful line of product we have now. Uh, all we can try to do is continue to make good pictures with good hooks and good storylines and deliver quality, because that's really the name of the game. Uh, there aren't too many pictures out anymore in, in B-movies that deliver a solid uh, sci-fi or horror punch, and we intend to keep making them. Anyway, as always, I'll see you on the next edition of The Video Zone. Birds of a feather flock together in Full Moon Entertainment's latest venture into the threatening, fantastic netherworld. Shooting on location in steaming New Orleans, veteran director David Schmoller creates a unique blend of reality and voodoo myth with Netherworld. I didn't want to do a voodoo story, but I, I wanted to, to use that, the aspect that, that in voodoo where you can bring back someone from the dead. Um, but I wanted to create our own myth, our own mythology. So I came up with this thing about birds. So I created a coven of people that was based upon bird mythology. See what happens when people are bad. Michael Bendetti from 21 Jump Street plays Corey, who was summoned by his father posthumously to help bring the old man back from the dead. Like most of the cast, he was affected by the voodoo vibe of New Orleans. I walked in a couple of uh, voodoo shops and stuff like that. The voodoo shops are freaky. Really freaky. I mean, you always hear about it, you know, and you read about it in your history books or whatever, but uh, until you come down here and check it out, you know, it's kind of freaky. Some of the gadgets they have in there twist your mind a little bit. This whole area is just filled with people who practice black magic in one fashion or the other. But just when we went down to the French Quarter and there's a lot of voodoo shops and the people and, and, and the fact that so many people really do believe it, you know, that's kind of weird. And, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's their thought, their belief. But uh, <laughs> I find it a little strange, but it helps me for my work and what I'm doing. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever turned people into birds. <laughs> the best thing that happened in this film was that we were, we were not able to find uh, or get red cardinals. So I had to open it up and use other kinds of birds. And uh, it actually, as it evolved, each character became a, a, 
a different kind of bird, and it, it, it just began to fit better in the story, and it, it just made the, the film was, a, was better than the script. David Schmolder had a lot of fans on the set, but his biggest fans were the actors. David cares about the acting. He cares about your motivation. He cares about who he created your character to be. David Schmoller respects your opinion as an actor. He wants that. He wants you to be creative because he's creative. Perhaps all of his simpatico with the actors comes from being an actor himself, in this film anyway. I wrote a part for myself in this movie. Um, I play Billy Chicago. And he's the bartender who spins the bottle on the tip of his finger like this. We're coming right up. I can't tell you how I do it. A lot of practice. Schmoller's is not the only hand doing tricks in the world. Special effects maestro Mark Schostrom created the Hand of Satan using Egyptian symbols and icons and a lot of latex. What I did was had a hand left over from another film of an actor. So I reproduced it in clay and then he, had, he was quite a large guy so he had a large hand. And I just sculpted in clay all the designs. I actually made two different hands, one a static hand and one kind of a more dynamic position. I sculpted both to look the same. There are just latex tendrils that are put in position and these are wrapped around the actor's head. And then I yank them through here and they, they film it all in reverse. So you get the effect of these tentacles coming out and whipping around the person's face. This is a hand where fingernails, or actually bird nails, come out and uh, claw into somebody's face. Just a basic push-pull cable. The threshold to the netherworld can be found at Tonk's Place, an otherworldly saloon run by Mary Magdalene. You're not lost, are you? I play Mary Magdalene, or Mary Magdalene, as I like to call her. So I'm just really sexy and brassy and sassy and I like her. Everything I've always wanted to be. <laughs> this is my first film. Hey, Mom, look at me. And Mom, while you're looking, you may want to look closely at that funky band that's playing Tonks. You might recognize rock legend Edgar Winter performing live and making his acting debut. Yes, it is. My my first experience with uh, film, actually, uh, I'm interested in scoring also, so this is gonna be invaluable experience uh, in that area. I hope to do more of it. These uh, scenes that we're shooting here are gonna have real live music, so they're just the way they would, you'd expect them to sound if they were done in a live club, in a live situation. So uh, I think it's gonna come off really, really cool. And the musician at Keyboards is not just any musician. It is David Bryan of the incredibly hot rock band Bon Jovi, also making his acting debut. He has performed with Edgar Winter before. Uh, there's a funny story. Uh, when I was 16, when John and I had a band, uh, Atlantic City Expressway, we opened up for Edgar at the Fast Lane in New Jersey, like uh, many moons ago. And it's pretty neat now we're in a movie together and on a soundtrack. Acting is not the only debut Brian is making. He is also composing his first film score for Netherworld. Scoring a film was always something in the back of my mind that I wanted to do because uh, I'm a classically trained piano player that I'm looking forward to, to some knock on wood, good success. Knock on wood, there it is. Getting all of these musical talents together for a soundtrack album is Pat Siciliano, vice president of Full Moon Entertainment's record arm, Moonstone Records. We were beginning a, a, record, a full fledged record label called Moonstone Records, and we're releasing soundtracks from each of the films that Full Moon does. I hope to develop a real nice rock and roll thing. We'll never abandon the traditional soundtrack of this traditional scoring, which Charles Band demands uh, to accompany his film. But I'd like to spice it up with a bit of, of interesting and clever feature music. We really went out of our way to create a, another world. The netherworld itself was, was, was a real tricky thing because in all of the worlds that we create in the plantation, it's a real world, even though it may be cold and stiff and formal, it's, the people are very real. Tonk's place, although it's a very bizarre place, it's still, it's very real, very believable. The netherworld is a state of mind, and the challenge as, as a filmmaker was how do you, 
how do you create that state of mind? There is a place between heaven and hell. Netherworld. I think for me, to, the natural progression to get into film scoring is that uh, the training, I've had classical training for 15 years on piano, and there's a whole range of emotions in the classical world, from happy to sad to getting sad to getting mad to not getting mad, the whole range of, of the human emotion. So it just plays very well with, with doing movies. And in rock and roll, my, my job is to, um, is to color things, is to create that emotion. Which is, uh, which is what's in movies. The first song that I did and theme for, for the movie is The Netherworld Waltz. And David, uh, I went down to New Orleans and they just said, you have to have a song ready. Just write the song and it's a blues tune. So I went down there and David had played me a tape that it, in, in the uh, neighborhood of what he was looking for to, to get the, the emotion behind, behind his movie. And I went back to my room, I brought a little keyboard down there and I wrote it overnight and I played for him in this little tape recorder. I hold it up to his ear. I said, what do you think of this? And he really dug it. And that day, I taught it to the band down there. What I wanted to do for the movie was to give it that Cajun voodoo kind of kind of vibe to it. You know, it needed to know that there was there was hoodoo coochie voodoo going on the whole time. And um, that was that was a little bit of a challenge to, to get it to corner it into that kind of music. And also, like with the flying hand, the special effects of it, that was something different that I've never done before. So it was neat to, you know, how to, to give a sound to a flying hand. <laughs> I used about, how many, about 20 or 30 synthesizers with computers and everything else. It looked like NASA going on in my house to, uh, to accomplish this. And it was a, an incredible task to get it, especially in the time. I mean, I was allotted three weeks, and I did about nine weeks of work. But I did it. I hope my fans dig it, man, because uh, I really enjoyed it and, it, and it's a cool movie. I think they're going to like it. They're really going to like it. And it's a surprise. You know, over the, um, over the last year and a half that we've been off the road, John did a solo record, Richie's done a solo record, and we've just branched out a little bit. And, and this is, is a real fun branching out for me. I really enjoyed it. It's a good growing experience. Hello, do you know me? Not many people do. That's why I always carry this. It's a monster hand. It's from a picture called Zone Troopers that I made with Charlie Band a few years ago. Hi, I'm John Beekler, and this is Magical Media Industries, my makeup effects company. Most recently, Charlie and I have been collaborating on a number of films, including Netherworld, Demonic Toys, and most recently, Seed People. Let me show you around. In the world of special creature and makeup effects, the artist is often asked to do the impossible. In this case, it's something called Seed People. This document, called a screenplay, is where all these weird visions come from. How do we come up with the visions? How do we make these things tangible? Well, generally, we go to something called a meeting. Bull sessions, where the executive producer and the director, in this case, Charles Bann and Peter Manugian, meet with me, the effects creator, who acts more or less as a police sketch artist and come up with the monster that they saw. In this case, I came up with this creature. He is called Tumbler. As you can see, it's a wild piece of vegetation gone mad with spiny thistles sticking out, great tendrils and a soft underbelly with a monster's face on it. Over here, you can see our shop supervisor, Mr. Rod Matsui, attempting to execute this creature. But if you look carefully, you'll be able to tell that Rod is doing it completely wrong. Everything he's doing will have to be redone. In fact, you'll never work in this town again. Over here are some body casts you might find interesting. In the process of creating a full body creature, we often go through the step called the body casting. Here we put alginate and plaster bandages all over the actor or the actress. In this case, we created a demonic teddy bear and pulled out a hard fiberglass mannequin of this character. 
We were very fortunate in the case of Demonic Toys that the actor we chose to play the mutant teddy bear looked an awful lot like the creature to begin with. I'm often asked, how do you get into the business? How do you make monsters for a living? Uh, well, I'll tell you. What you need is the desire. If you know what you want to do, there's nothing on this earth that will stop you from doing it. If you want to sculpt, if you want to make monsters, if you want to direct, there's nothing holding you back. Sculpt, make molds, write your stories, pick up your home video camera and make a movie. Just go for it. You know, I love cinema the fantastic. Creature features, horror films, things that go bump in the night. Whether I'm directing Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 7, or killing Freddy Krueger in 3D, directing Troll or Cellar Dweller, I really enjoy these movies, such as the movies that Full Moon Entertainment gives you, like Seed People, Netherworld, and Demonic Toys. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, I'd say so. ba ba da ba ba dang 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 ba ba da ba ba dang dang ding dong do Full Moon. take you to a time of madness. No! Have mercy. Arrest her. No! An inquisitor's lust, a woman's innocence. His battle for her soul will create evil's ultimate weapon. Look up. The pit and the pendulum. No one escaped. No, no one. The Pit and the Pendulum, now on video cassette from Full Moon Entertainment. In the dark past, humans were their prey. And blood was their life. Now in modern day Transylvania, eternal evil has reawakened. I'm afraid for you. Subspecies, now on video cassette. Jack Death, the future cop, is back. And on the transfer attack. They're biodegradable. He's got old enemies. I want fresh blood. New lovers. I happen to be his wife. So am I. Ladies, please. And a dead aim. 20th century must be getting to you. You have no idea. Transfers 2, now on video cassette from Full Moon Entertainment. Andre Toulon only wanted to entertain children. Herr Toulon has developed a method of animating his puppets without string. It's as if they were alive. Now, the Nazis will turn his puppets into toys of terror. <laughs> World War II has just gotten smaller. Think I'm afraid of this? You will be afraid. Puppet Master 3, now on video cassette. Hi, Full Moon fans. I'm Charlie Spradling. You may recognize me from Full Moon's Puppet Master 2 and Meridian, but right now I'm in this wonderful creature effect shop. This is where some of our Full Moon monsters are born. 
and I'm also gonna let you in on the newest and the coolest collector's items. Moonstone Records is rising up the charts. You should rush right down to your nearest record store and get our newest release of Netherworld. This original soundtrack features blues songs by Edgar Winters and instrumentals by Bon Jovi's keyboardist David Bryan. Netherworld is sure to rock you. And so will our other tapes and CDs for films such as Puppet Master, The Pit and Pendulum, Meridian, and Subspecies. When you rent our full moon videos, don't forget to ask for our trading cards. We've just come out with a new series for Puppet Master 3 and Doll Man. They have great paintings on the front, and when you flip them over, they'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know about our creatures from Six Shooter to Spruik. They're really cool. They say that our full moon movies are just like comic books, and we couldn't agree more. That's why Charles Band commissioned Malibu Graphics to do adaptions of our films. On the stands right now are Doll Man and Demonic Toys. Your comic store should also have back issues of Children of Puppet Master, Subspecies, and Trancers, all in full bloody color. If you want to own one of Andre Toulon's puppets, you can get the limited edition model kits of the dolls from Puppet Master Films. These beautifully sculpted versions of Blade, Tunneler, Pinhead, Torch, and Six Shooter come with a certificate of authenticity and instructions on how to make the puppets come to life with your paintbrush. Back at Full Moon, we just received our new t-shirts for the latest releases, Netherworld, Doll Man, and Puppet Master 3. They're great t-shirts. They come with the original Full Moon logo and beautiful paintings on the back for each film. And if you love the artwork on the back of the t-shirts, be sure and order our original movie posters. But the best way to find out about all the great things happening here at Full Moon is to join the fan club. For $20, you'll get this great Full Moon Company t-shirt and Moonflash, our quarterly newsletter that tells you all the inside scoops on the films that we're making, future projects, and a chance at collector's items that I can't even talk about. For more information, you can call the Full Moon Hotline at 1-800-999-9559 or write to Full Moon Entertainment. P.O. Box 526-8721, Santa Monica Boulevard, West Hollywood, California, 90069. Keep sending me those fan letters and stay tuned for the next edition of Video Zone. Bye-bye.